I don't know, but... Now, you know what you need, Chantal? You need to get your butt out of the Middle East. You need to go back to Canada, and you need to start living a life that isn't just a big scam. I mean, this is silly. You're going to be 40 years old. You're out here, I mean, following some 29-year-old thinking that he's going to love you and marry you and make a life with you and whatever. Girl, come on. He laughs at you. He makes fun of you. I mean, why do you think you're over there with him? Because you guys are living it up? I mean, yeah, you really look like you're living it up. You really look like you're happy. What you need to do is you need to go back to Canada. You need to start putting in hard work. And you need to, if a relationship is really what you want, if that's your end game in life, I know it is for some people. If that's really what you want, someone to love you, someone to call you baby, someone to give you affirmations, whatever. I mean, slow steps. I mean, whatever. Get on the dating apps. Work on yourself. Get back to a point where you can walk for more than a minute without getting dizzy. I mean, that would, if I were that in that place, that would be my number one priority. Not who's going to call me baby when I put my head down at night. I mean, girl, come on. I mean, you're not going to be able to heal in this ev- environment, let alone thrive. You're talking about energy. You're sitting here telling us how you're about to fall asleep. So you're getting help and. You want to dunk on Chantel? And that's why I think Shannon and FFG's chemistry is so beautiful, because they're so similar. FFG has to be the hero. That's why she has to always dunk on Chantel with something. Like, when she did the thing with uh, BBJ, I stand on this. She did her big one. She did her big one with that one. Especially with the way Chantel was running her mouth, talking about FFG's dogs. and When I saw her pull that off, I said, Leave it to Chantel to have me applaud FFG. I was pissed. I was like, this was so good. She trolled the fuck out of you. Oh, my God. So just so we're clear, and you heard it here first. What happened with BBJ, rescuing BBJ? The BBJ rescue um, to FFG will be with um, the 89 LBs are to Amber. You will always hear about it for years to come. Always. That's never going to die. She did her big one. She had to make it public. And for those saying, oh, it was for the money. I think you guys forget. I've said this before. Multiple things can be right at once. She did her big one and definitely helped BBJ. Because at this point, I think almost anybody's better than Chantel. But yes, of course it was for the money. If it wasn't for the money, she would have. she wouldn't have made it public. Of course it was for the money. Are you kidding? The bitch held the whole, she shopped for BBJ's collar on stream. She shopped for a cat to get a Gucci collar for a cat. Of course it was for money. But I'm not going to take away the fact that like, at least she got BBJ, but yes, it was for money. Yes, it was for content. Are you crazy? That is her 89 LBs, bitch. She is never letting that go. That will always be content in some way. Isms. So... Uh, French fried girls should be worried because Chantal was threatening to sue again. Uh, shadowed that she might have returned to Canada to handle some other business and she would handle that while she was there. Um, I would be terrified if I was French fried girl. So terrified. This is the woman who couldn't even make a vet appointment and she's going to coordinate a multi person lawsuit because she felt duped about her cat being given to somebody else, by her to somebody else. Um, but she couldn't tell you who because the selfish bitch wouldn't even walk down the stairs to go say bye. She handed it to Pete's. Again, many reasons we can't follow through with our commitments. So, um, And Chantal doesn't have much tolerance for distress or discomfort. If something isn't exactly the way she wants to eat it, she's not going to eat it. If it's not the right temperature, she's not going to eat it. Um, so you would think someone as large as her would be much more picky. But, uh, or be much less picky. But actually, some of the more morbidly obese people I know are rather picky about their food. And, like other folks who deal with addiction, um, can get pretty nasty if they don't get what they want. How many people think that they've probably fought about food a couple times already? I'm sure he was fine with her coming over, but she probably, she farted out a bunch of promises initially that she was gonna, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym and lose weight, and it'll be great, and I'll be going to the beach, and we'll be travel-beezing. If you're too fat for a plane, you gotta do something. 
because now you can't even get out of there in a hurry if you need to. Um, there's no shame in buying two plain seats if you need them, but if you don't like that you need them or that you're cutting it close to needing them, whose job is it to change the shape of Chantal's body? Yours? Mine? A pill? Some Ozempic? No, it comes down to Chantal and what she chooses to do. At this point, she's had more resources and opportunities and access to treatment over the years that most people don't give a shit how she feels or that she probably can't handle all of her ADLs maybe on her own because she was always such a nasty, self-centered person that her discomfort brings people pleasure. We've heard of schadenfreude, you know, it's the same sort of thing. I don't So we saw some boats pass by while we were hanging out by the riverside and decided after we were done hanging out by the river to see if we could find a dock and take a boat ride ourselves. On our way- It was his hard earned money to try to buy her food that would support her health. And then either she ordered it without him or he came to reason of, look, I don't love you so much that $250 isn't worth risking your health to me. So if you really love me, Chantal, really, really love me, you'll go on there, eat yourself half to death, and give me the cash. So, I don't know. So and she wants privacy. Okay. And uh, where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? He's out with the boys. Thailand, from what I understand, has a very, very active sex scene. So, um, I'm sure he'll text you. But at any rate, this week we're going to... But she's sitting there, not a lot of people around, but it was the old eyes darting. Remember the outhouse? Or going for Burger King and then sitting in the parking lot, full face of makeup, looking all over the place to see who's looking and who's watching. She's out proud and doesn't care, but hawks like she's ashamed of what she's engaging in. So when she's sitting there with Sala eating, and there's people, you know, not a lot of people, because they go everywhere when it's closed. She's afraid of people, and they want to be able to film, and they're weird. They're weird. She likes getting attention, but standing out doesn't really... Like, I think she probably feels like people are staring, because they are staring. It's a spectacle. She's four times the size of a normal woman. So I think people are going to stare. That's That shouldn't be unexpected. Is it rude? Is it cruel? I don't know. Bottom line, it shouldn't be unexpected. And to act shocked would be kind of stupid as well. One, I'm pretty, okay? That has a lot, and I, I don't mean that to be conceited. I'm being very matter of fact. Being pretty gets you a lot of privilege. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you can get away with a lot if you're pretty. Number one, I'm pretty. Hi guys, and welcome to Tailored Talk. So guys, the reason I've been away is because I've been watching this amazing trailer, okay, written by Sam H. Freeman and Nung Chung Ping, and they've done a British short film. They did it in 2021 and it was called Femme. So it became a success and they decided to invest more money and more time into making a longer version of this film called Femme. Now, the original version was 2021. It won a British um, short award um, from the B um, British Independent Film Awards. And it became a huge hit. So they made a longer version of it. And I haven't seen the short film. And I'm trying to find the, t the short film. But um, I've they've released the trailer for the new longer feature length version of Femme that they've done. So the how you why YouTube recommended this to me I don't know but they did and I've been watching this trailer non-stop so if copyright if they'll allow me um to put the trailer in I will show you this trailer that I am seriously obsessed with 
Sorry, guys, I forgot to add trigger warning, um, LGBTQ themes and homophobic violence. <laughs> well, you can turn around if you're a fucking man. You're letting them win. How you want to deal with that? I think you're a nice looking lad. On your front. I'm a nice guy. If you disrespect me, fuck you up. I get that. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same. Oh, yeah, man. You're a fucking big man. I'm best remember not to fuck with you then. So, this film features Nathan Stewart Jarrett from um, Candyman and Misfits and George Mackay. Now, I haven't seen George in anything, but he has been in um, 1917. After research, guys, he's been in 1917, um, When Hands Touch, Wolf and I Came By. I haven't seen any of those films, but I will watch uh, this George Mackay in Femme because this film looks awesome and it's a kind of a genre that hasn't been covered um, in an LGBTQ world so this film looks amazing and I will be doing video after video after video of this film Femme when it finally comes out in December so please stay tuned on to the main topic guys it seems that I saw on Twitter that Foodie Beauty's partner in crime, Pete's, his channel is, his YouTube channel is dying. So I went and checked and they are correct. Twitter is correct. It is dying. Pete's channel is dying a painful, embarrassing, yet quiet death. And I love that for him because he abused Sam and BBJ just as much. So, guys, if you get this video to over a hundred to over a hundred and four views, we'll have done better than Pete's. Um, I'm just really glad that he's not able to profit from his channel because people like him, like not just animal abusers, but he could, he could have done so much better for himself and so much better for those cats. And he deliberately chose not to, to support Foodie Beauty, um, to support her mission to kill BBJ. You know, he could have been a good person and turned that whole cat situation around. And he didn't because he still lives up Foodie's ass, and he's still in love with her and he still wanted to. Um, Can I just add, guys, that... Right, Foodie cheated on Pete with BB, right? The nickname, his real name isn't BB, but then his nickname is BB. And then she started calling the cat BBJ after BB. And I think Pete absolutely hated that. You know, she she's calling him, him the cat BBJ to taunt Pete with the same guy that she had an affair with and ruined his life. So the anger and frustration that Pete's feels towards Chantal for cheating on him with Bibi, he clearly took out on the cat in the worst ways possible. Not to mention that even the cat that he did like Sam, he treated like shit and never got Sam um, groomed or, or taken to the vets or anything. So yeah, he's a massive POS and I'm glad that his channel is slowly burning into flames. He still wanted to prove that he was loyal and proved that she was number one and proved that they could still have an alliance and deliberately abused and starved BBJ um, to make sure that she wouldn't, you know, that she wouldn't ever wake, wake up again. So, yeah, I, ho I hope, uh, you know, one day I hope to click on Pizza's channel and it has like 10 views. I'm just so glad that he can't, he can't monetize YouTube. And become even more lazier and even more of a POS. Okay, guys, so now we're going to go on to Foodie's video. Okay, guys, so just before I do the review, 
um, guys, her foodies channel, her official channel, it's not exactly alive and kicking either. Okay, so seven days ago, um, her lentil soup, um, 11k views. The grocery sh store, five days ago, 11k. Um, cooking, the cooking, the chicken roast, which I'm going to cover today, 11k. Um, two days ago, um, eating the chicken roast and um, doing a mukbang with the, did, with the chicken that she cooked, um, 8.6k. Um, right, 21 hours ago, making homemade Chef Boyardee beefaroni and cheese. That's another one that I'm going to cover probably tomorrow or Tuesday. I'm not sure. Um, that will, That is 21 hours ago, 6.2k. So these are progressively getting worse. Her most current one, eating the cheesy beef macaroni, beefaroni, pasta with cheesy garlic bread. So she's just she's just making these, eating them, and then spitting the videos up. Again, lazy, but her 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 newest one, um, seventeen hours ago with the macaroni beefaroni or whatever, six point two k. So eight eight point six to six point two to uh, another six point two. All of, you know, the last three are, are very low. Very, very low. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the um, cooking chicken roast. Let's take a look at the cook dinner with me. Cooking chicken roast, roasted potato poutine, cheesy broccoli with gravy. Um, let's take a look at this video because I hear it's a disaster. <laughs> Hello, foodie beauties. <laughs> Hello, bees. Hello. Guys, I do wonder, like, how many filters does she put on to kind of make her face, like, an average size and make her head, like, an average size. Welcome back to another video, guys. Today I'm in my kitchen and we're finally going to be cooking something here in here. So, not cooking something for you, baby girl. That's my cat. She knows I'm making chicken somehow and she's freaking. Why are you trying to turn your cat into BBJ? <laughs> I've, I've th were you trying to call her BBJ and then you got ahead of yourself and then it turned into BB gal? <laughs> So I'm feeling a little bit better, but I'm a little stuffy, uh, getting over a cold or something. You always say that, but it never stops you from eating. You never go, I am so, I'm, I've am i got the flu, I've got flu-like symptoms, you know, I've got tonsillitis, I've got laryngitis, I've got some kind of infection, I can't eat. Like, it never stops you from eating, ever. I have a chef hat, yes I do. And uh, I'm going to make dinner for myself and my husband today. And so just yourself then. I'm going to be making because we all know that Sal is not there. A chicken roast or a roasted chicken. Uh, so despite the chef had and this apron, which is one size fits all, except for me. But let, let me guess, it can't fit you. And it's just kind of alarming, like how old she looks here. You know, late, late 40s, early 50s, you look here. You know, you just look so tired, so worn out. It doesn't really fit me. The fat bags under her eyes. Yeah. But whatever. Uh, so, yeah, I... Just pay for a large, extra large apron. Yeah. Um... I'm sure you can get them online like you get everything else. I'm just going to be cooking your average meals with things I have in my pantry and my fridge but I thought you know what cooking is kind of boring so I'll bring you guys but if it's boring why are you doing it along and we're gonna make and we'll all be bored together like if you find something boring why would you film it and post it like at least do something that you really want to do a and I know that's eating but like try to find another hobby foodie chicken roasted chicken some air fryer potatoes and 
some broccoli and cheese, uh, maybe a salad, we'll see. I'm not too sure, my husband hates broccoli. But with cheese, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Your husband hates poutine too. It still didn't stop you. It still didn't stop you from dragging Salah to a poutine shop twice in Thailand. <laughs> Even on his birthday. All right, guys. So let's get started. So, yeah, this is my my oven, my stove. It's kind of... But where's the counters? Older, but it does the job always. Why is everything on her stove? So the very first thing I'm going to do is preheat my oven. She's got no countertops. To... You, you can't use a stove as a makeshift table. You have to get a table in here so that you can put your ingredients down. Like, where's, where's your counter? Where's your countertops? Guys, I went back to the Seaside condo video. She has a small countertop and a sink. So she could have put her stuff on the counter and then filmed her co herself cooking at the stove if she w really wanted. I think it's just down to laziness that she put everything on the stove. Salt and pepper in the way. When she first showed this room in the condo and she did that condo tour, it wasn't this small, was it? This is the size of my chicken, it's small. So, let's do, um... You can tell that she's really bored. She's boring herself, that's how dull this is. You know what, I want the chicken to release as much juice as possible, so I'm going to cook it kind of low and slow. So we're gonna do uh, bake three fifty. Yeah, three fifty. She can she can barely reach that oven with her stomach in the way and her food. She can barely reach the buttons on that oven. Fifty. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil on the bottom. I use this pan for almost everything. I have like maybe two or three pans but whatever okay so we're just gonna run that well i mean broke people usually do foodie and plus you don't really cook let me just i wash my chicken i don't want to hear it okay i don't like the slimy on the chicken hi that that's it chantal with all your you know all your issues and all your illnesses going on, just handle raw meat. Handle raw meat. Very small bird. No, no plastic gloves, no cheap plastic gloves, nothing. Just bare hands on raw meat. Not GMO, I guess. So I'm gonna put it in the pan. Why wouldn't you put it in the oven to bake as opposed to the pan? Unless you're quickly, you're just lightly Grilling it first and then putting it in the oven? Mix it around with olive oil. I know this looks gross, but I'm gonna wash my hands. Why is it why is it in the pan though? And not a baking tray? Alright. And honestly, I'm gonna be making a gravy with the drippings. So I'm not going to add any spice really to it. Um just a bit of salt pepper and maybe a bit of paprika. My paprika is almost finished, so I have to renew it. But what have you been using the paprika, paprika, paprika on? What have you been using that on? You don't cook. <laughs> Maybe she's been using that on Salah. Maybe it's some kind of kink that, that, that he's got and they've been, they've been using right now. And I'm going to take some of the olive oil and just kind of rub it. Um, she needs a microphone. Bird. I can barely hear her with this. Okay. Okay, and then... 
And then I'm going to take some butter and just place it on the, uh, the bird. maybe a little inside couldn't she put it um to the side so that and couldn't she stand to, to the side so that we can see her chopping this up it, it's better than having her back to us constantly You can melt the butter first. You can poke holes in the bird. Up to you. I'm doing it this way. So once the oven's preheated, I'm gonna stick it in the oven, and then I'm gonna. Right, she is gonna stick it in the oven. That's a relief. Baste it every so often, maybe every 20 minutes. We'll see. Um, I'll let you know exactly how. Why is it in a pan, though? Why is she? Why are you preparing it in a pan? How long? I let it cook for. I'll probably. Raise the heat on it near the end of cooking so that the skin, if it's not brown, it will get browned. Um, but yeah, chicken. You, you couldn't pay me to eat that. Maximize the juice. I'm going to cover it. Why is everything that she's doing on the stove? Well, I'm sure there are countertops. Aren't there countertops near the sink that she can use? Because you're smoking it in the oven. Because it's not a large chicken, so it probably won't give out very much juice for a gravy. So let's see if this works. All right, I'll be back in a bit. Why is it in a pan and not a tray? <laughs> Why is it in a pan? I, I'm confused. Why does she look so depressed? Where is Salah really at? It's not a large chicken, so it probably won't give up very much. I know, it's, a, it's enough for you and nobody else, basically. Much juice for a gravy, so let's see if this works. All right, I'll be back in a bit. Foodie, why are, you, why are you looking so sad? Why are you so depressed? What, look at this face. This is not a happy married woman, ladies and gentlemen. See you. Okay, that's that was so fake. All right, so that bird, as tiny as it is. Why is it, why is it that bird and why aren't you calling it a chicken? Like, what's with all the microaggression going on in this video? Why are you so tense? Why are you so angry? It's throwing off a mighty smell. Does that like a cooking channel? <laughs> no. Okay. I'm like, and rat face isn't cute. You're nearly 40. I'm really hungry. I haven't eaten yet today. You always say that and that's always bullshit. So I want to have a freaking big salad while I'm waiting. Oh, salad. My ass. So let's make one. Oh my God. Why waste? Why waste a salad? Well, this thing is on wheels. And why, why, are, you, why are you preparing a salad on your stove? Why are you preparing it on your oven hobs? This is ridiculous. Where's where's your countertops? All right, so I have some lettuce here. Why is everything done on the oven? Some water. This is really weird. The veggies. The veggies in my. The veggies in my. Uh, put this aside for Howie, my hamster. The veggies in my fridge. I have lots, so they want to. Uh, Come out and play. And where's her microphone? I can barely hear this woman. I can barely hear that that bird. I can barely hear this bird. I can't hear I can't hear you, foodie. Where's your microphone gone? Alright, so I'm just gonna chop about a head of romaine here. Put that in a huge bowl.
I love the smell of roasting uh, chicken. Oh my gosh. Okay. But why is it in a, a pan? We have a cuke. Just rough chop that. Yummy. All right. Tomato. I mean, she's right near the door. What if Sala opens it and nearly and hurts her back? I'm so congested and... So congested and sick, but touching chicken with your bare hands. I don't know how long that's going to be for. And, you know, I, I don't have much energy, but... But, you, madam, you're over 400 pounds. I mean, when's the last time you had real energy? Life goes on and, you know, I, I have all this food... I did a huge grocery order and I felt okay. You know, especially I, since you went back to your car because you couldn't do the whole grocery haul. I thought I'm okay, I can go out. But um, the next day I felt poorly. Like it took a turn for the worse. So um I don't know what happened there, but... Uh, well, I mean, you got you got sick. I mean, it happens. Uh, since then, I've been inside trying to recover and just eating little things. Not much. Like, like burgers, fries, pizza, you know, huge mountains of rice, kebab, Should that kind of thing. Honestly. For, except for like soup and I've been eating soup and sandwiches. I don't believe you for one second. So, and uh, ordering here and there, you know. Here and there, my we all know that you order every day without fail. So we have a salad. I'm surprised the cat that Julia hasn't walked in. I'm surprised the cat's not in here. Have some cheddar cheese. The door must be very shut. It must be shut, shut. Because Julia would be in here at the smell of chicken. Like that. Okay. So. Madam, where are your countertops? Because this is very strange. I'm going to eat some of this. I'm going to put some in a smaller bowl, save some for Salah. Yeah, he's not coming. He's not coming in tonight. And I have my favorite. French dressing is my favorite. I love it. I've loved it since I'm a kid. Uh, so, yeah, just one sec. It's kind of thick dressing. What's your guys' favorite salad dressing? This Were you out of breath just saying that sentence, foodie? This one, and there used to be one. I think they still make it. But creamy cucumber. Alright. I can finally taste again, though, at least. Mmm. Good dressing. I'll be back soon to do the potatoes. All right, that was delicious. Let's do the potatoes. Sure, sure, foodie. I believe you. I believe that you found the salad delicious. <laughs> Yummy, creamy, fruity, fresh. Yeah. So we might only need one potato. <laughs> Again, what is with cutting the potatoes on the stove? What is this? <laughs> Where were your counters? And why can't you move the camera to the towards the counters? Cut off the bad parts. Why are you chopping potatoes on your oven stove? Here. Now, so I have a liner here in my air fryer. Okay. 
Now I'm going to leave skin on because I like the skin. Okay. And by the way, I have like two knives. One is like a bread knife, so. <laughs> We're going to make them big enough chunks, okay? Foodie needs a microphone. She needs a microphone. This is ridiculous. You know. Okay, thankfully she sped this up. Thank God. I mean, it would be great if she had something to talk about and she was chopping up potatoes, but her brain is fried from, you know, fast food and drugs and all, all that meth off the floor and probably the urine from the pea-soaked mattress. So her brain is fried and she's got nothing to talk about. So I'm glad that she sped this up. Just two potatoes looks like it will do it, so. What I'm going to season them with is some Evu, of course. A little long, I know. Salt. Pepper. And this is not open yet. Hold on. I have to top, <laughs> to top it up in my. But foodie, what about a small table, like a small table, just so that you can just put your stuff on there, put all your ingredients and, you know, put the uh, container on there and chop things up. Why don't you just buy a small table? Where are your counters? Whew. Or even do it, do it on the, do it by the sink. Why are you doing it on the stove? Some garlic powder. Okay. And I love onion powder. It's all over my apron. Better than my shirt. That's why I got this. But foodie, it doesn't fit. It's one size fits all, and it doesn't fit. Onion powder, okay. And I'm gonna try a little bit of steak sauce. I just improvise, like whatever, I see something, you know, and then I'm That's cheap enough. Just gonna mix them, all right. So that's what they look like. They look nice. So I'm gonna pop them in the air fryer for until they're tender with a fork, wash my hands, and I'll see you back for the broccoli. Let's check the chicken. Oh, it's not bad. Okay, let's check the chicken. That still looks like a ghost of a chicken. You see them brown bits in the pan? Well, no, I can, we can barely see anything because it's a miles away. You see them brown? Oh dear, okay. That, that doesn't look pan. great. That's going to be a gravy. That doesn't look great though. Why does that chicken look... Why does that chicken look barely cooked? So I'm going to collect... And there's no way they're sharing that chicken. She's definitely eating that whole chicken. This juice... Why does that chicken look so... Bleh? now why does it that chicken look like it's been thrown outside and kicked around a bit by the neighborhoods by the neighborhood kids and then dragged in by julia why does that chicken look why does that chicken look like such a mess that chicken looks sick Jesus, she's putting the steel container on top of the pan. That's hot because there's nowhere for her to put the pan. 
just put it put it in the sink or put it or yeah put it in the sink wait till it's cooled down and then put it in the bin oven to brown up and then you can put it in the oven Why didn't she just put it in a... And then hopefully everything will be ready by the time my husband gets home. He'll be hungry. He's out doing some work. What what work is that? You know that she threw that in there so that people would speculate what he does for work. Because ever since he quit his job with Dalla and the, the business fell through with Murad and he basically removed himself from the business. Like, he doesn't have a job. I'm also going to raise that to 400. Sorry, I'll just home. He'll be hungry. He's out doing some work. So you knew she, she, you know, she put that in there on purpose so that we would speculate what kind of work he does, but he doesn't work. I'm also going to raise that to well, red room reservations. Reserva you know, renovations, renovations on the Red Room. But that's it. Like, what, what proper established work does Salah have that makes him money for the both of you? Like, can you answer that? 400. And we're good to go. Last thing is the broccoli, which I'm also going to be cooking in the air fryer. So when the potatoes are done. Why would you cook broccoli in the air fryer? Especially since it's probably fresh broccoli. Why is that going in the air fryer? That needs to go in a steamer. Or a boiling um, pot of water. That doesn't need to go in an air fryer. I'm going to put them in the oven to keep warm. Cook the broccoli. And we're good to go. Last thing is the broccoli. Which I'm also going to be cooking in the air fryer. So it makes no fucking sense to put broccoli in an air fryer. It needs to be steamed. What are you talking about? When the potatoes are done, I'm going to put them in the oven to keep warm. Cook the broccoli, so I'll see you soon. Okay, guys. You, you mean burn the broccoli. <laughs> Welcome back. All right, so here's the potatoes. Those look okay. I'd never eat them, but those, those look okay. A little overdone on some of them, but... Yeah, they look a little burnt. Mostly, they look perfect. But the ones that are brown look okay. I'll give that to you. So I'm going to wrap them, put them away for now. I'm going to take some broccoli here, frozen. Why, why are you putting frozen broccoli in an air fryer? New liner. Why? Why? They need to be steamed. It needs water. It needs to be steamed, not burned. What are you doing? Salah hates broccoli, so... Well, yeah, because you've been cooking it in an air fryer instead of putting it in a steamer. No wonder he hates it. And this is a man that's quite finicky with food as it is. It would really help if she did this from the side of the oven and sat and went to the side of her oven rather than doing it in front of the oven so that we could see what she's doing. Okay. And some cheese. Frozen broccoli, coupled with shredded trees, put in an air fryer. Like the the meth has just cooked her brain. Like the all the drugs have cooked her brain to pieces. She really could have just googled this, and really just got a pot of water and just put it on the stove and let it heat the broccoli up. All right. Nada, you've completely turned her brain into mashed potato. I hope you know that when you're watching her videos. Now we're going to cook that in the air fryer. Why? Why in the air fryer? We're going to make a gravy now. 
How can you call yourself Foodie Beauty and proudly put frozen broccoli in an air fryer with grated cheese? Can somebody please explain that to me? A little bit of butter. I mean, maybe she's doing this for controversy. Maybe, maybe that's it. Because her, cha her channel's going down the toilet and she's, she needs some controversy to get people talking. I don't know. Now, this is my first time making gravy in this way. Making broccoli, too, obviously. So you'll have to bear with me. <laughs> Why is everything on the stove? You know, oil, plastic tubs, the seasoning. Oh my God. The bowls. Every, everything is crammed onto this stove, which is on. She, the, what is she doing? Bits here that are very good for flavor. The stove is a stove. It's not a countertop. It's not a table. What what is going on? Oops. And I want to deglaze it. Put it on medium heat here. Our chicken is resting nicely. Is that also flour that she's using to thicken the uh, brine? Also on the stove. Get some temp. I'm gonna add some flour. They make a room. Exhausted, sweating, completely out of breath. The flour. <laughs> it would be really great if she did this from the side of the oven, like I keep saying. I've never done this before. You've never made gravy before? I, d I doubt that. I think you have done that before. It's hard to find packaged gravy where I am. Believe it or not. So, just uh, two tablespoons of flour. Okay. I think that'll do. Now, Yeah, I put the chicken stock in here. Why would you put chicken stock in your family kettle? I'm just so confused right now. I mean, I mean, I know you're broke, but not even broke people do that. I mean, I don't, I don't understand. Why would you just not um, boil it in a pot or something, or um, microwave, or put it in a cup and microwave it with water? Or boil it in a and boil it on the stove. Like why? Why would you put, um, like gravy, grand, gravy, the chicken? What is it? <laughs> Go back. Okay. I think that'll do. Now. Yeah, I put the chicken stock in here. Why would you put stock, chicken stock, in your cof in your um kettle? So every time you have a hot drink, tea, coffee, you know, hot chocolate, it it's gonna taste of chicken. I mean, this pretty much proves that Salah doesn't live here, guys. <laughs> like, why would you do that? Why would you do that unless you were the only one that lived there and you and you love your stuff and you love everything tasting like chicken? Why, why would you why would you put that in the kettle? Why would you why would you put chicken stock in a kettle? I, I don't get it. And all the lime scale and whatnot and all the lime scale and all the stuff that's in the kettle and all the dirt and the grime because you know that she's not cleaning it. So you've got grime, lime scale and you're putting that in, and general dirt from inside the kettle and you're putting chicken stock into that 
to put over a chicken that's allegedly fresh. Here. I just have so many questions. Who puts chicken stock in a kettle? In any kettle? I haven't seen people do that even as a prank. Now let's see if this works out. And yuck. All the chicken stock with dirt, dust and, you know, months of lime scale in a chicken broth that's going to be put on chicken. And, and Foodie wonders why she's sick. Like... Looking not bad. Nice and thick. Okay. Well, yeah, foodie, because there's so much grime, rust, and lime scale from that kettle. That's why it's so thick. Gonna add a bit of black pepper, my favorite. Actually, it smells really nice. Let that simmer for a minute. Now that's your basic gravy recipe for anything. Um, From chicken stock that you've put in the kettle, though. Drippings, broth, flour. Rust, lime scale, dirt. Adding drippings and flour is classic, you know, so. Yes. She sounds down. She sounds upset. But make the roux with the flour before. You don't add the flour after because you'll have a lumpy grape. It's already lumpy. It's full of lime scale. I'm going to taste it. Ugh. Ugh. No. Again, you couldn't pay me to, to try this. One spoonful. You couldn't, you couldn't pay me enough. Mmm, it's so yummy. It's so fresh. It's so creamy. It's so fruity. Wow. Mm. Very chickeny. Oh my god. She's become a parody of herself at this point. Very nice. Chickeny, lemony, creamy, kiwi, -y, strawberry. I love that. She needs to roll her sleeves up. Oh, because her arms are so short and stubby, everything her, everything just hangs. Um, down her hands. She needs to roll her sleeves. And guys, people have pointed out, this is her maternity shirt. This is her maternity shirt. And it was actually quite baggy on her when she first got really it. Like. So, that's it for this one. Let's get to the last one. Alright guys, this is the last, certainly not least. This is one that I bought at the actual store. And it's a very baggy fit, as you can see. Um, I like the color and it goes right up to my neck here, full coverage, but it's light and airy for summer. And so yeah, this is the front and this is the back. Alright guys, this is the end of my modest. And now it's as tight as anything. Has little bits of chicken too. Alright, that's perfect. I'm happy. <laughs> sure, I'm, I'm sure that your renter husband can't wait to chow that down. Along with you tonight, if you're lucky, foodie. All right, once the broccoli's ready, I'm going to serve up dinner, and I'll show you the end result. All right, so I'm going to add some of my gravy. Okay, guys, why is it on a paper plate? You've got... A really awful, like, Bly House Manor haunted chicken in dirty lime scale ridden gravy with okay looking half burnt potatoes and air fried broccoli with grilled cheese. So frozen broccoli, 
that hasn't touched a drop of water and that was air fried to a crisp and topped with cheese and it's going to be covered in gravy and all of that is on a paper plate like i really think foodie beauty's family have a good case to sue nada because if he hadn't given her all those drugs like her brain would not be treacle syrup would not be treacle syrup right now like what what is going on what is going on with you I made a potato pretend. I had yeah, it just, it looks gross. Some cheese. There's the chicken breast. Why is it on a paper plate? What, why not get a ceramic plate? <laughs> so. What on earth is this? If you want to watch me eat this. You wouldn't, you wouldn't even feed this to a kid at an after school club. Like, it's a paper plate. It's a, why would you put all of that gunk on a paper plate? And chit chat for a bit and have dinner with me? Come watch my mukbang. Coming soon. Why are you eating on a paper plate? And all the, all the, like, limescale, dirt-ridden grease is dripping off the plate and onto the floor. Wow. Thank you guys for watching this video. I have a lot more to cook. Please bear with me. You have a lot more food to ruin. Um... This is yeah, she doesn't know what to say. She's so out of breath. I have her plates right now. We have to do some kitchen shopping because I'm not used to cooking. I used to order out like twice a day. Yeah, but you also have a cooking had a cooking channel early on with Foodie Beauty. And earlier on, you did used to legitimately cook dishes. Like lasagna and chicken dishes and BB's African dishes. And, um, you know, you used to cook stuff from scratch. So, like, what are you talking about? That was my life. But I'm trying to cook. What are you doing? No, what is this? Cook. Why is she acting like she's never cooked before? She has a whole cooking channel called Foodie Beauty where she would order takeaway, but she'd also cook as well. She's also made recipes and eaten them and done mukbangs. So what, even the most famous one with the homeless, you know, um, getting jiggy with the homeless guy on the walk, wasn't that a pasta meal? Sorry guys, my mistake. The um, threesome that she had when she went home with the man and the woman and they didn't want her and she slept on the couch and then she got like diarrhea and projectile vomited all over the bathroom. That was the homemade pasta dish that she cooked herself. For us, so, yeah. Yeah. That's how the broccoli turned out with cheese on it. All right, Yella, let's go eat. Okay, guys, so really, I can't really get over the air fried broccoli and the lime scale, dirt, crusty, crud ridden um, chicken gravy. Why would you put chicken stock in the kettle? Why would you put, you know, a vegetable that needs to be steamed? Why would you put that in an air fryer with absolutely no water? Where, where's your countertops? And why are you filming just in the stove direction? Where's your kitchen? Where's your countertop? Where's your sink? Where's the space? Where's her sanity? Where's her brain? Where's her common sense? Where's it? Where's everything gone? Okay, guys, let me know what you think about this absolute, complete, limescale, air frying disaster. Um, let me know what you think of this in the comments. Thank you for watching. Thanks for listening.